Good morning, and thank you for joining me today as we continue to read through Colossians. We're in Colossians chapter 2, and I'm going to begin reading in verse 16 today. This is a very interesting set of regulations and rules for how to live a Christian life. The author writes, Therefore, do not let anyone condemn you in matters of food and drink or of observing festivals, new moons, or Sabbaths. These are only a shadow of what is to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Do not let anyone disqualify you, insisting on self-abasement and worship of angels dwelling on visions puffed up without cause by a human way of thinking and not holding fast to the head from whom the whole body, nourished and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows with a growth that is from God. If with Christ you died to the elemental spirits of the universe, why do you live as if you still belonged to the world? Why do you submit to regulations, do not handle, do not taste, do not touch? All these regulations refer to things that perish with use. They are simply human commands and teachings. These have indeed an appearance of wisdom in promoting self-imposed piety, humility, and severe treatment of the body, but they are of no value in checking self-indulgence. Now, I don't know about you, but growing up, going to Sunday school, this is not a scripture passage that they shared with me. And maybe there's reason for that. Isn't this incredible to see? In the, in the Bible, telling Christians in the early church, don't make commands about what not to do. Don't spend so much time putting restrictions and regulations on each other. It's not about pietism. It's not about severe treatment of the body. It's not about not doing the things that you think you're not supposed to do. But instead, it's about something deeper. Instead, being a Christian is about following Christ. So, you know, so many times I'm talking with a friend or I'm talking with a, an acquaintance and they mention doing something that I, I wouldn't do myself as it doesn't fit with my values, it doesn't, doesn't fall in line with my judgment. And there's always a temptation, especially since I'm a pastor, um, to say, you know, hey, this is an opportunity for teaching, and oh, we shouldn't do things like that because Jesus tells us to love one another. And that just reinforces this idea that Christianity is about telling people not to do things, when instead it's the opposite. And Colossians clearly demonstrates this. It's not about do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. Now, does that mean that we're allowed to handle, taste, touch everything, and that we don't have any regard for what goes into our body? No. But it does mean that that's less important than who is at our center, which is Christ, and what we do with that, what comes out of us. What are the positive things that happen because of our faith? That's what really matters. And so, yes, there are things that we should not do. And I think particularly of our brothers and sisters who are in recovery from, uh, from alcoholism and from drug abuse. There are things that we should not taste, touch, uh, use. But as, as the author says here, simply cutting ourselves off from those things because we think it makes us better, that is of no value and checking self-indulgence. Get to the issue at the root. Who is in charge of the world? Who do you want to serve? Do you want to serve alcohol? Do you want to serve drugs? Do you want to serve your own in-the-moment desires? Or do you want to serve Christ, who has something better planned for you, and through you has something better planned for the world around you? I think this is a beautiful thing to share not just with each other, but especially, I would have loved to have heard this more as a teenager. So share this with the teenagers that you know. Christianity is not about telling you what you can't do. It's about showing you new opportunities for doing amazing things through Christ who strengthens us. Would you join me in prayer? God, we thank you for all that we are we thank you for our brokenness because it makes us depend on you. 
Yet you are continually remaking us into a new creation. So keep us from false humilities and help us to reflect back to one another what it means to be created in your image. Amen. Have a blessed day.